Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here and welcome or welcome back to another YouTube video on the channel and today guys here we are to continue our AFL 2022 match reviews. Here we are for the Geelong versus Collingwood qualifying final match review and oh boy I'll tell you this was probably one of the best finals uh, that we've had in a little while. It's been a brilliant final series this year and this was another cracker. Of course a qualifying final Saturday afternoon at the MCG. And it was a mighty MCG crowd as well. Cracking game of footy. Now, of course, regarding me, how am I going with my uh, sickness? I'm starting to feel a lot better, which is really good. And should be better in the next couple of days. But here we go. Geelong versus Collingwood match review. This game was a ripper. I've literally just finished watching this game. It was a cracking game. And the MCG was most certainly buzzing for this one. Saturday twilight, Saturday afternoon footy at the MCG. Geelong versus Collingwood. Geelong 11-12-78. Beat the Pies 10-12-72. The Cats are through to a home preliminary final at the MCG. Get one step closer to that penultimate grand final dream. And the Pies, they have been the kings of close games. But this time, they finally taste defeat in a close game. And this game was brilliant. The intensity was up. Both defences were rock solid as well. Uh, low, Well, not necessarily low scoring, but not like high, high scoring either. But both defences were really good throughout the whole game. It was such a pressure game. There was lots of pressure. You couldn't move a metre or two without being tackled. It was so intense. And I've literally just come watching for this game. The last two minutes was, were intense as you ever see. Thinking, are we going to go into overtime? Are we going to go into overtime? No, not in the end. But, oh man, it looked like we definitely could have gone into overtime for this one. But in the end, the Cats do get the job done. After, the Pies started really strongly in that first quarter. They owned everything. Of course, though, in that first quarter, the only quarter of the game where the Sun played a role as well. So that could have perhaps hindered the Cats. But everything... For the Pies in that first uh, one and a half quarters, it was just, every, just everything just went their way. They were winning everything. They were outnumbering the Cats in stats uh, and even felt like they were outnumbering them in people as well, even though they weren't, but felt like that. And then the second quarter, that's where the Cats start the comeback. Um, and then Collingwood's only goal comes on the halftime siren. So from a Collingwood point of view, a very disappointing second quarter because they only got the one goal on the halftime siren, so Collingwood would have loved to have done better than that, but in the end, they couldn't quite, and the Cats, that second quarter, three goals to one, that's where the comeback started, that's where they were humming about, that's where the stats started to turn back into their favour, that's where the ship started to sway in favour of Geelong. The third quarter, very uppish and downish quarter for both sides, the Pies started strongly, um... Both sides scored three behinds. It was a very behind festy game in that first two in that first uh, half. In the third quarter, though, both teams started to get their goal chances. Uh, three for the Cats, four for the Pies. Uh, the Pies did really have a very good third quarter. They kicked the first goal of the third quarter. The Cats responded with the next two. The Pies kicked the next two. Cats kicked one. Pies kicked one to have a pretty decent lead at the half at the three quarter time break. I think it was by seven. Points in the end did the Pies lead by. And then they kicked the first of the last to really extend that lead. They kicked the first of the last to really extend that lead to Collingwood. Then the Cats, though, as they do, they get one right back. Uh, I think it was a bit of Ash Johnson magic from the uh, pocket for the Pies, of course. If you saw that um, that brilliant uh, banana from the pocket, like that, that just shouldn't be possible. And then Jezza goes and says... Hey, Johnson, you can do that. Well, I can go one step better. Left foot drop punt from the other pocket to nail and bring the house down at the MCG. Oh, it was insane. That was a brilliant moment. And then the last quarter, uh, the Cats kick a goal, the Pies kick a goal, the Cats kick a goal, the Pies then kick a point, 72-72. Before then, a bit of a mistake in the Pies defensive half and the Cats go and make it certain before the last ditch effort from the Pies. But in the end, it's not enough to win the game. And the Cats go through to a home preliminary final. Meanwhile, the Pies will be battling it out in a semi-final versus the winner of the Dockers and Dogs game. 34 disposals for Scott Pendlebury played a big role. So calm. So good under pressure. Jordan Degoe, of course, he's been rumoured about trades. 124 fantasy for him. Nine tackles. 
for him and Tom Atkins, but he stepped up and kicked a big goal for Collingwood at a big, big moment. Three goals for Cameron and Rowan. Cameron had a big day. Rowan, he got his hands on a few big marks as well. Uh, Josh Day cost 107 fantasy. I do feel I do feel like hang on wait what's this fantasy doing? Um, I do feel like this was a really interesting game. I don't think the stats have updated just yet, but we still have somewhat of an accurate reading here. But oh man, this was a, this was a very good, hard for intense game. But Josh Day cost 107 fantasy. Supposedly Jordan to go. He had 124. He did step up in the big moments late, but Day cost to go. He more Guthrie Pendlebury. Cameron, just some of the leading A4 fantasy winners on the ground. Three goals for Cameron. Says Rowan also got three goals as well. Two for Johnson, as we currently know as well. He kicked a couple of belters. Ash Johnson fit in the Collingwood side really well as well as Ash Johnson since making his debut. Disposals, 26 for Dacos, Pendlebury Dugowie and Nick Dacos. Uh, 21 for Noble and Sidebottom. Now to the marks. 10 for Darcy Moore. 7 for Josh Dacos. 6 for Tom Stewart. Zach Guthrie. Jamie Elliott. Uh, Jeremy Howe. Tackle. 7 for Jordan Dugowie. Uh 6 for Atkins. Dangerfield Guthrie. Stengel. Cameron and Atkins. Um, now to the hitouts. 22 for Stanley. 21 for Cameron. 19 for Cox. 3 for Blitzarves and Hawkins. Now two team stats, uh, inside 50s, 53-56. Both sides got their share of scoring. Both sides had their chances is definitely to say the least. Um, let's see, what else have we got? 14 to 13 free kicks. I feel like free kicks didn't overly affect the game. The biggest though were definitely because it was a booming MCG when the ball was, was it paid, like paid insufficient intent, yes or no? Those are always the big calls. There's been a couple of really big dramatic calls this final series uh, headlined by Tom Lynch. Uh, Hitouse was in favour of Collingwood. Clearances were all locked though. 41-42 in favour of Collingwood. Centre 10-10. Stoppage 31-32 in favour of Collingwood. So just that extra one showing both sides had a really strong midfield to attack the footy. The Pies had way more uncontested footy than the Cats. That is where the Cats did end up losing the game early on, but they managed to bounce back in that area later on in the game. The Pies did take way more marks, 62-90, to 9-13 to inside 50s. I feel like the Cats really had to earn this one. Their defence at times was a bit shaky, not going to lie. Collingwood did have a few easy entries sometimes, and I didn't really point out a lot of times where the Cats got easy entries, so... Yeah, that, that was that was a disappointment there for the Cats, but the Pies, they did end up getting a few easier chances to go ahead and get goals. No wonder why 9 to 13 marks inside 50. 13 to 9 contested marks in favour of the Cats. The Pies did lead for most of the game, but the biggest lead was 19 points, and that was in the first quarter. I think the biggest lead from there was about 12 or 13. So the game was always really close. Um, tackles 70 to 84. Both teams bought the intensity. Uh, seven to four bounces in favour of the Geelong. Uh, again, both sides look to take the game on, but oh, brilliant game of footy. In the end, the Pies get the job done. Uh, sorry, in the end, the Cats get the job done. But this one could have really gone either way. The Comeback Kings finally, well, the Comeback and the Close Kings do take uh, defeat in a taste of their own medicine, realistically. Um, but, oh, this, this final was one of the best finals, um, over the last couple of years. I reckon this final was intense. It was really good. Both teams brought the intensity and the pressure. They both wanted to get through to a home prelim, but in the end, it was the Cats by six. So now, of course, the finals that we've currently already had. Brisbane won by two against Richmond on Thursday night, footy 106 to 104. Uh, the the D's lost to Sydney 69-91. to The Swans booked a home prelim at the SCG. Uh, and the Cats booked a home prelim at the MCG, beating the Pies 78-72. to Of course, one of the finals next week will be Melbourne versus Brisbane at the MCG. Before next week, there will also be Collingwood versus either Freeman or the Western Bulldogs at the MCG as well. So two MCG finals next week. 
Fremantle versus Western Bulldogs. That is the last final of the finals week one. Apparently forecasted for wet weather. So who knows what's going to be able to go on there. Late start time. Doesn't start till 8.10. Uh, 7.40 my time. Or 6.10 Western time. Because obviously, you know, got to get the prime time vibes rocking in Perth as well. But there we go. This week has been a massive week of finals. We've had it all. Uh, and of course, we're still one more game to go. Doesn't start, uh, not too far away from starting. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to hit that notification bell. Sitting guys and then miss another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much for watching. This is bye everyone. Blame me for the out.